In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your Chinese laser cutter to a whole new level with the Cohesion 3D laser board and light burn software. I recently got myself a Chinese CO2 laser cutter and so far I'm really happy with it. And a large part of that is down to the power and sophistication of the workflow and that comes courtesy of a Cohesion 3D laser board and the software Lightburn. In a previous video, I presented my pre-purchase research in the form of a Chinese laser buyer's guide. But this video is a guide to upgrading from one of these and it was quite painless. I should remind you that if you do still have the typical M2 based board in your laser, you'll have a much better time by using K40 Whisperer software. But this stock board wouldn't talk to my computer for me, so therefore that wasn't an option. But I still consider what I have now another step up. We're going to start by looking at the specs, what we need to get it installed, and then have a look at the workflow. Here is our main piece of equipment. It's the Cohesion 3D laser board. It has a 32-bit processor and four TMC2224 silent stepper motor drivers. As you can see from the picture, it has a lot of connectivity. The idea is it's plug and play for the most common types of K40 lasers. On top of this, it has an expansion to run an LCD. It has ports for end stops for min and max for X, Y, and Z. It also has an output for a peripheral device. In my case, I'm gonna use this to turn on and off my air assist pump. Now we'll see on the screen here, there's a number of options that you can add on. And if you're not sure what you need, there's a really great buyer's guide that goes through each one one at a time and tells you the pros and cons so you can make an informed decision. Personally, I got the laser board. I didn't need light burn because I already had a license and I also added the graphical LCD as well as the light burn camera. It's probably worth noting that Cohesion 3D have just released their own rotary attachment. If my machine hadn't come with one of these, I probably would have ordered this one as well. Our other key component is light burn, which is a piece of software. As I said, K40 Whisperer is a huge improvement on the software that comes with a K40 laser, but one of the main selling points of this is it's compatible for PC, Mac, and Linux. As the description says, it pretty much does everything with layout, editing, and controlling the laser, and it can import from a range of different programs. Every community group I've looked on on the internet loves this program, and later on I'll demonstrate the workflow so you can see just how good it is. In my buyer's guide, we established that the Ruida controller was probably the best one you could get. Generally, they sell for around $300, therefore the Cohesion 3D laser board is relatively good value. It's also worth noting that the license you need in Lightburn to run this controller is $80, yet for the Cohesion 3D board, we only need the $40 license. The documentation for Cohesion 3D is quite thorough and based on a forum. Important sections are the pre-sales questions, and if you had a question before you made a purchase, this is where you'd come to search and if need be, post. There's also a really good FAQ system and several questions that I had were listed here and I got instant answers. The most important section is probably the documentation and this is where you'll find your step-by-step -step guides for installing the board, the rotary machine, setting up in Lightburn, etc. It's important to know that Cohesion 3D is the work of just one person because Ray is just one guy, I think it's good that he's laid out an expectations page so customers can know how to seek support, how long it will take, and how long the orders will take to ship. When I received my board, I unboxed it and did a test fit of everything. The SD card holds the firmware. This is the graphic LCD adapter. It's clearly marked to face to the left and we align that with the text reading the correct orientation. The back of the LCD is labeled one and two and the breakout board for the LCD is labeled the same way. Very straightforward. If the display looks familiar, that's because it is. This is the same type used on many 3D printers. On this application, it displays a lot of data on the home screen and has many menus to change the things that are relevant for the laser cutter. So far so good, so let's get it installed. The install docs are step by step and cater for different K40 setups and there's several variants illustrated. Your first step is to look at your board and see which one matches. My board was a B1 variant and you can see across the bottom we have end stops, two stepper motors and then a laser fire plug. For me that matched the very first one in the instructions. The process is incredibly simple. You unplug everything from the old board, fix a new one in place on the matching screw mounts and then the instructions take you through carefully step by step on how to plug everything back in. 
At the end you plug in the power supply cable that comes with the laser board as well as the USB and you're done. It really couldn't be easier. My B1 board was bigger than a typical M2 board. It did however have extra mounting bosses and 3 out of 4 of those lined up with the Cohesion 3D board. I could have easily mounted it there except the stock location was the opposite end to the control panel. And you might have seen in the last video I already had a custom panel designed. And speaking of that front panel, I have refined my design a little bit since the last video, adding this holder here for an SD card extension. This thing probably looks a little bit more simple than it is when it's finished because there was a lot of measuring and positioning to make sure everything would fit on the front panel as well as the hole through the rear. You also need to make sure you have a way of feeding through the wires for things like the buttons on the front without them getting caught in the panel. There was no mounting bosses on this side of the machine, so I had to get creative. Instead, using all of these blank cutouts and screw holes on the left. I modeled up an adapter where I could put through some bolts to dig into the plastic and match up with what I already had on the machine, and then a simple right angle to mount the laser board with the lower cutout matching what was in the sheet metal for the USB plug to fit through. Here's the Cohesion 3D laser board mounted in place on the bosses. And here's a view of the whole adapter next to the mounting holes that I was intending to use. My problem from choosing this location is that all of the plugs were on the other side of the machine. Two were too long and two were too short, so I simply cut and resoldered on to get them all to the right hand side. You can see with my location, I made sure there was just enough room to plug the SD card into the main board. I also made sure that the USB cable lined up with the hole on the exterior of the machine, and with these two main hurdles cleared, I plugged in the four cables that are the minimum you need to get everything working. For my install, on top of that, I also had the graphic LCD adapter, as well as an SD card extender to go to the top of the machine. Here's everything in place, and here's the back of my custom panel when looking from the inside. The finished panel has everything I need, but you might be wondering while well, I still need the potentiometer for laser power with the C3D board. As the document in the FAQ explains, and verified by my own research when working out my pinouts for my machine, the laser power supply has two connections, one that sets the overall current, and then a second to fire the laser which is controlled via PWM, basically we still need a hard limit for our PWM to work within. On the SD card that comes on the board is some pre-made firmware that should be good for pretty much every K40 setup. The firmware is Smoothieware. Some people used to run Gerbil because it had a faster raster engraving speed, but now there's Cluster which comes on all new boards and is a superior version of Smoothieware. Modifying the configuration for the firmware is quite straightforward with an editor called Sublime Text. There's two steps that pretty much everyone has to do to get going, and that's setting your bed size and your motor current for your steppers. If you need to, you can check the Smoothieware documentation for this, but I didn't really find it necessary for the minor changes I needed to make. In the end stop section, there's values for alpha max and beta max. I measured my laser to have a travel of 970 by 400, so I put in the values here. I upped the current to the X and Y stepper motors to the maximum allowable for this board, which is 1.2 amps. After these basics, I did a little bit more optional customization of the firmware. I lowered the default seek rate down. The seek rate is for the non-cutting travel moves and they're normally really really fast and have a higher chance of skipping steps. When you've made your changes, you save, safely eject your SD card and when you power up the machine, after a few seconds, the firmware will be updated. We're now ready to connect to Lightburn and fortunately that's really easy. If we click on devices, we can click find my laser and if it's plugged in, it will probably be found. Alternatively, you can go create manually, select Smoothieware connecting via USB, give it a name, set your bed size, and then tell it where the origin of the laser is, which is going to be in the bottom left even if it homes to one of the other corners. You'll get confirmation and when you click finish, your setup is complete. There's two extra steps that I took. The first was to run the dedicated laser board power supply from the mains terminals inside the machine, so they'd be switched on and off with everything else. The second was to run my air compressor for air assist from the outlets at the back, but not these ones, they're notoriously dodgy. The laser board has a dedicated output for just this job, so I followed the guide in the official documentation. I removed the triple power outlet, measured everything up, and then modeled up this adapter. It takes a single Australian power point with a spot on the back to mount a standard relay. The cable tires hold it in place and prevent the terminals from touching any metal objects. 
Here it is with properly crimped terminals and connecting the relay to the laser board is really straightforward. There's a five volt header in the corner of the board that goes directly to the relay and that's all that you need to do. The firmware is already set up. Let's finish with a quick tour of Lightburn. Here we have our bed size as I put in in my machine settings and down the side we have a palette for drawing all types of simple shapes. We can see that as soon as I draw something, something appears in the cuts palette. Here's where we can set our speed, max power and amount of passes and if we double click we'll get even more details such as turning on or off air assist. The beauty of Lightburn is the layering. If I switch to a different color layer and then use the text tool, I can add in an additional layer and you can see the different colors and therefore they have different cuts. You can see here I've done some editing so the black layer will be cut out because I have a slow speed with high power and the blue layer will be engraved because I have a fast speed with low power. I can also change from line to fill or fill plus line if I want to fill in the gaps in between the letters or whatever shape I've got. Let's try something a little bit different. I've pasted in a picture of Chuck Norris and who wouldn't want to and you can see it's automatically been detected as an image. When I double click, all of the settings come up appropriate to that. And with the cluster version of the smoothieware, we can engrave images like this quite fast. This JPEG was done at 300 millimeters per second, 10% power, and the entire job was completed in around about seven minutes. Once you've found a setting that you like, we can utilize the library. If we come to create new from layer, it gives us a chance to add in some labels and then we can bring back these presets with one click later on. So here I've imported a DXF from Illustrator. We can move it around and up the top we have all of the standard controls such as rotating it and setting our exact size. One really nice feature that we have is the frame button. When we click this button, the laser will move and trace the outline of the shape, helping us position our job correctly. But let's say you've imported something with a more complicated shape like this wire plate from a Lowrider 2 CNC. We can use the second frame button here and it will trace the path around the object. This is really handy for placing things in exactly the right place and maybe avoiding defects in your workpiece. And there's so much more we can do. We have a move panel to manually control the laser position. We have a console where we can manually enter G code and with one click set up custom macros. We also have things like optimization settings, which let us change the order in which we cut and other parameters like that. And we have buttons here to save our G-code to the SD card to run it from the laser board graphic LCD. With all of these functions, I already have a really efficient workflow, but I really feel like I haven't even scratched the surface of what this is capable of. It really is a really powerful combination with the laser board and Lightburn software. And there we have it. My Chinese laser that previously had obscure pirated software is now sophisticated and easy to use. With this combo and the simple mods I did in the last episode, I feel like I can get the best out of this package for a long time to come. And there's still more to come because here I have the light burn camera. It lets you see inside down at the bed to better line up your material with your cutting job. Plus it takes a snapshot, converts it into vector, and then you can engrave it right back on all in the one piece of software. You can expect a guide on that somewhere down the track, as well as some results of my testing and projects that I'm working on. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy laser cutting. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.